For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And now just a quick question on the Legislative Council as well, because this body was supposed to have some kind of a, put some kind of a check on the military. Uh, so what, what is likely to happen with that and will the SCP have a membership there as well? Uh, look, what is clear for us, even the, 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 the Legislative Council will not be the same Legislative Council which was stipulated uh, in the uh, <clears throat> the constitutional document. And as such, for example, the percentage which was given to the forces uh, for uh, freedom and change, uh, they were speaking about 67%. Uh, th this 67% will not be given to this force. This is one. Secondly, today, you can hardly speak of a freedom and change uh, organization similar to the one established in January uh, uh, 2018, uh, 2019. And that's why there is a whole new situation going on in the country. And that's why we, I don't, I, the issue was not yet discussed, but I doubt very much that the SCCP would join hands or would join such a legislative council uh, based on the new uh, political uh, document. The only way out is to have a legislative council on the same grounds and basis as proposed and stipulated in the Paris uh, uh, constitutional document. This is one. Secondly, yes, we agree it should, uh, uh, the, the forces within the Legislative Council should reflect the development which took place since April uh, 2019. But here comes what is the, the, uh, the development. While the military speak about development in the sense of the peace agreement they have reached in Juba, which we think was a big farce and a big lie. Uh, 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 while we are speaking about the presence of the, for example, resistance committees, trade unions, uh, and, and so on. And, uh, there's a very important thing which we have mentioned, which we have to mention, is that uh, within the components or the blocks of the freedom and change, uh, were the block of the organization of civil society. And this block left Today left the alliance. So the alliance even is getting weaker rather than stronger. And a new alliance, a new alliance is gradually appearing in the state. And this is where we feel that there is the possibility of change. Absolutely. Right. And in this context, also, you mentioned the role of the international community and its play and the various players in the region. Now, one thing that during the Sudanese, uh, the protests that are taking place, one demand was also regarding a change in foreign policy. But what has happened is, in fact, that Sudan has actually normalized ties with Israel. There has been a lot of engagement, for instance, with uh, AFRICOM. So could you talk about what exactly the current establishment is working in terms of, uh, what is its direction in terms of foreign policy? And how does this affect domestic policy as well? Let us, let us put, make it very clear. From the very beginning, uh, with the intervention of uh, foreign uh, forces, especially the United States, Britain, uh, Germany, uh, and some others in uh, uh, Russia, uh, China, with all these foreign forces, plus the regional forces, Sudan became fell as a prey to the different interests of these forces. The more we the advance is going, uh, the, 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 the advance of the people is going, the more contradiction becomes clear between the internal, uh, let us say, interest of the big majority of the population and the interest of the minority inside, which is aligning itself with the outside powers. That's why one of the things the military uh, council and later on the sovereignty council, which uh, under the full control of the uh, five uh, military did was uh, to uh, hijack the, 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 the file of foreign policy. And whatever, yeah, I mean, the, for example, from the very beginning, the charter or 
Charter of the Freedom and Change, uh, which was established in January 2019, speaks very, very openly against Sudan being part and parcel of political or military action. And in that sense, it was interpreted that one of the important steps to be taken, an immediate step to be taken, is the withdrawal of the Sudanese troops from Yemen. However, this the military refused categorically. And despite the fact that even the civilian government formed after, after that time demanded this, it was never ever implemented. And this is shows from the beginning, the foreign file or the foreign policy became the domain of the military. And here it started this uh, uh, meeting in uh, Entebbe or in Uganda between Netanyahu and Burhan, uh, attempts uh, to link the idea of uh, uh, repeating the name of, the, deleting the name of Sudan from the list of uh, countries uh, supporting terrorism linked to the recognition or normalization of relations with Israel. It was never ever discussed in any civilian platform. It was always in a hidden thing outside the country, in, uh, in uh, United Arab Emirates or in one of the African uh, neighbors of the Sudan. And we usually, we usually, till today, we usually hear about these meetings from the Israeli press, from the Zionist press. Never ever news came from the government of the Sudan. Even the recent visit by the head of the Israeli intelligence service was never ever declared in the country. It was only through the Israeli mass media. We came to know about it, that he was here and so on and so forth. So uh, when we speak about foreign policy, we understand very much that now uh, Sudan, uh, uh, because of its, uh, I don't know, geographical uh, uh, location, because of the richness in it and so on, uh, and because of the investment made by Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, really uh, the foreign policy is not uh, implemented to the interest of this country. It was hijacked by the military and it is under the control of this alliance of the military and uh, the foreign forces. Normalization of Israel, for example, I don't, even the Uma party, even the Uma party is against, which means that <laughs> nearly three quarters of the freedom and, uh, and change parties are against the, uh, uh, the normalization of, uh, of relations with Israel. But it's still, it is a process going on. Who is driving it? It's the military. The idea of Africa, this, is, this goes against the document of January 2019. Sudan today is requested by the Africa to, uh, to play a major role in the uh, U.S. Uh, intervention in Africa. A military base is being uh, requested. On the other hand, Russia is requesting also uh, a naval base at the Red Sea. China is still uh, playing behind the scenes, demanding, uh, uh, demanding compensation for the losses it incurred uh, for the petrol and uh, oil uh, industry in the country. So Sudan is under pressure from different forces. These forces find unusually, the, the, historically in the Sudan, usually whenever the military are in control, this is where it becomes much easier for the, whole, for the foreign forces to implement their plan. And this is what is happening now. So we don't see, we don't see that there is a big change, for example, between al-Bashir and uh, uh, Al Burhan, in the sense that both are following the same foreign policy which uh, wa was being followed. And they are, they are really ha working hand in hand with imperialism, with Zionism, and so on and so forth. Recently, we don't speak only of the visit of the uh, Israeli intelligence uh, service uh, head, nor the uh, African, but there was the Minister of Foreign Affairs from Britain, there was a representative of uh, uh, Federal Republic of Germany. Uh, all this, they are coming here not to help in the transitional uh, period, but really to confirm that the Sudan should adhere and become a part of the uh, inter international, <laughs> to become a part of the policy of uh, big capital uh, in, in the world. We lost 
let us put it this way, our independent uh, foreign policy. Absolutely. Right. And uh, one, uh, one major final question in terms of how there have been reports that sections of supporters of al-Bashir have been mobilizing again and, you know, on the streets as well as demand, putting pressure on the new system. So how are the progressive forces, such as the Sudanese Communist Party and the resistance committees, actually countering these remnants of the old regime? Look, uh, look, comrade. I mean, the, from yeah, if you take the Sudanese pound, when uh, on the 11th of April, uh, 2019, one dollar equals 80 Sudanese pound. 80 Sudanese pound. Today, one dollar equals 320 Sudanese pound. And this shows the deterioration, inflation, call it whatever you want, mm -hmm. but it affected the Sudanese. Citizen to the extent that you can hardly speak about a normal uh, life, a decent life for the Sudan. That means uh, the, he will face it everywhere, from food to education of the children to uh, health, uh, medicine, everything, everything. And that's why the discontent in the street is very, 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 very real. And uh, for, for the normal person in, in the country, it is unbearable. I mean, this is hell itself. However, and this we must also stress, in the demonstrations organized by the resistance uh, uh, committees, there is one of the slogans which says very clear, I mean, this is a translation, living in hell uh, better than living under the Muslim Brotherhood. And this shows uh, the difference. In the last demonstration uh, on the 21st of uh, October and uh, last year, and then on the second anniversary of the revolution on the 19th of December, the Muslim Brotherhood or, or the remnants of the previous regime tried to infiltrate uh, the mass demonstration. And even some of them came and burned the flag of the Sudanese Communist Party, but they were. Uh, very strictly and clearly isolated and being uh, sent out of the demonstrations. Today, it is the same thing. Now, for example, uh, they are using children. And we can see it in the streets. They bring, they pass through motorcycles distributing uh, oil or petrol so that they can burn. For the children, it is a game to burn tires. But then if you speak with them, and this is what we are doing as a Communist Party or as opposition, speaking to them and trying to convince them this is nonsense. So they, what they are trying to do now is to create a kind, and this is the Muslim brother, to create a problem. And uh, because for, I think, four or five times they try to organize demonstrations calling for the army to take power, to take full power. The issue is the following, which they don't know or they don't want to know that the army is in power. So the idea of a coup, I think it is really far-fetched because I don't think the army, the generals, maybe if, if there is a coup, it will be an internal coup, a power struggle within them, but not on policy. Because the policy is determined not only by the army, but by the international community in cooperation with the army. So these policies are there. So when you speak about the foreign policy and its reflection on the economy, it is very clear. What, what is happening now is the full uh, uh, implementation of the instructions of the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, which the previous regime was doing. So in terms of, I don't know why they, uh, they need a coup. They don't need a coup. What they are trying is to save next, next of some of the uh, previous uh, heads of, uh, of the regime, but not uh, to force the army into action. The other forces, especially the professionals and the trade unions and the uh, resistance committees are organizing themselves. They are trying to establish a platform, a new platform, an alternative to what is going on based on the document of January 2019. The original uh, program, uh, minimum program take into consideration the, the change of time and the change of force. And this is being discussed among these forces, including the Sudanese Communist Party. Absolutely. 
Dr. Fari, final question in terms of you can briefly summarize what is the uh, path ahead as far as the Sudanese Communist Party is concerned, the key slogans and the key actions that are being planned in the coming months? Yes, sir, there was a plenum of the Central Committee of the Sudanese Communist Party. And uh, I'm coming fresh from that meeting. Anyway, the main thing on uh, the national level is that we have been calling for a new realignment of forces, new lines, for quite three or four months now. So we are advancing uh, in that direction. We still maintain the idea of a broad front. However, there are certain changes on this task because before we were trying to implement certain policies. Here, now we start from trying to change the policies which are being implemented in the different fields, in the economic field, in the foreign affairs, in the so-called peace uh, agreements, uh, uh, the second thing on the representation of women and young people. Uh, I mean, all the principles which were betrayed by the present regime and by the uh, present leadership of uh, the forces of freedom and change, we are trying now to repeal and change. And this is one. On the other hand, we are trying to really pose certain uh, discussion uh, within uh, the framework of what is here uh, now in 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 in, uh, uh, in the center? What do we mean by that? Uh, the, the resistance committees, the, the professional alliance, the uh, trade unions, the workers' representatives, the peasants, women, uh, students, youth, and so on and so forth. At the same time, we are opening a new front of dialogue, very strong dialogue, and we have achieved certain steps in that direction in discussion with the Sudan uh, Liberation Army, led by Abdul Wahid, uh, as well as the PFP uh, North, led by Al Hilo. Uh, we are trying to bring all these forces together. Yes, there are a lot of small issues of differences existing. We are trying to patch up and see how it will happen. However, even what is the role of the Sudanese Communist Party in such a land is under discussion, because we think we were forced, and to some extent, we we failed to play, uh, to play our role as a leading force within the society and within the revolution. And this is a principle which we hold today, and which we are trying uh, to really change it in the sense that to prepare the party to play a leading role within uh, the the broad uh, alliance. This is very important for us. But we are not going to use the same as say arguments that the the, the government should be the vanguard. No, we want to do it through convincing our alliance and through convincing uh, ourselves, Paris and, and our alliances of the validity of the programs we are presenting and the validity of the leadership we are uh, giving to this movement. The last thing which we are uh, trying to do, which we think is very important, is to appeal for an, uh, an understanding of international solidarity with Sudan. Solidarity here with Sudan does not mean uh, only uh, on the level of governments and uh, removing the name of Sudan from this terrorist list or uh, canceling its debt and so on, which are also important issues. But the most important issue is the real struggle going on in the country. For example, there is a big danger today of Sudan turning into a, a similar situation like uh, having, uh, you know, we have minimum of two armed groups which are now, or three armed groups actually, which are now within the government. The rapid uh, support force, uh, the uh, Sudan Liberation Army and uh, the Muslim Brotherhood Organization. These forces are there, and they reach an agreement with the government. First of all, the rapid support force is uh, part of the army, but really it, is, it has nothing to do with the army. It is an independent uh, force. It is a bastion of certain power. Uh, they have their police, they have their secret service, they have their prison team. Even they, 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 they detain people. Recently, they killed a young man. So these, these armed rebels, armed groups, whatever they are called, they are really posing a certain uh, 
danger to the river. A certain danger and a serious danger which uh, can really jeopardize the future of the country, not only the future of the revolution. The, the most important thing, the peace agreement reached in Cuba between them and uh, the military component stipulates one very dangerous clause that they will maintain their armies till uh, after the transitional period, that means during the election. And this is something which we feel that understanding this and demanding the immediate dissolution of these forces is very important. Yes, to dissolve them, but to take the necessary steps so that they don't turn into bandits and so on and so forth. On the other hand, we feel that the, the, the role played by the EU, especially in support of the rapid support, uh, rapid support forces, should, should be seriously criticized. They, they are the, uh, I mean, the AU, uh, during the, the Bashir regime, maintained, uh, supported the, these forces and made them in a, into a real, trained them, applied them with arm and money. Yes, they, they, they thought that they would protect Europe from, the, from immigration, from uh, smuggling uh, refugees. In fact, they did not do that, no. They just maintained this and they became, during Al-Bashir's time, they were the most active and brutal repressive force. Today, the other two groups, when they speak today, when they say that they, they, the, they will maintain their forces till the election, till after the end of the transitional period, why? There is one thing which is clear. Both of them, the Sudan army under Minnawi, they are fighting in Libya, uh, under Haftar. The Muslim brothers are fighting with the, the government in Tripoli. They don't have army in the Sudan. For example, I will give you another example. When we speak, they speak about the, the government and the military especially, insisted on the withdrawal of the UNAMI forces, that of the United uh, Nations and the African Union. The people in the area, in Darfur, were against this. The government promised that they will... Uh, uh, bring troops, then the uh, army, police, and so on, to maintain peace and to replace these forces. <clears throat> these uh, rebel groups also said they will join. The result, after the withdrawal of uh, maybe 70% of the UNAMI, look at the situation in uh, Darfur. The last, see, forget about what happened before, but the last massacre which took place in Jinena, which is the capital of southern Darfur, whereby nearly 500 people were killed. And this is, this is, this, is it how they will maintain peace in the area? The last thing we want to say to the international public opinion, I mean, this peace agreement in Yuba, they celebrated, in, in, uh, celebrated the signing in, in, uh, in Yuba. Yuba is the capital of Southern Sudan. Does Southern Sudan solve its own uh, problems? It is still on civil war basis. Here they celebrated the, the, the agreement in Khartoum. Did they go, be it the government, the military council, or uh, the, uh, the rebel group? Did they go to Darfur? Did they enjoy supporting Darfur? I mean, this, this is, these are the points. Because today, the, the, the refugees, the, 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 uh, those who are living in the camps, the, the, the nearly two million living in the camps, and, 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 uh, and in, uh, the, in villages and so on, do not have a voice in the peace uh, accord reach. And that's why we feel that, that we, we saw that the UN supported the peace uh, agreement. The UN, I think, supported the peace agreement just to get rid of the expenses incurred by the UN meet in, 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 in Darfur. And, and this is the point. I mean, people should really dig and see what are the real problems in the Sudan and should listen to the opposition in the Sudan and, okay, and should listen exactly to, to the people in Darfur. And I think this is the step and this is the solidarity we need now because the, 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 the camouflage presented by uh, Hamdok and uh, Burhan, uh, the, the, the problem is not the normalization of relations with Israel. It's not the withdrawal of Sudan uh, name from uh, the, the so-called terrorists. I mean, no, these are not our headache. Our headaches are inside the country. And this is where we need support.